everybody, we're back. My next guest may be best known for his uh, best-selling memoir, A Heartbreaking Work of Staggering Genius. He's also the editor of the offbeat literary journal, McSweeney's. Please welcome Dave Eggers. You know, uh, I've, of course, known about you for a long time and, 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 and heard things about you. And if there's one thing that I always admire about you and your work is that you approach things differently than a lot of people. A lot of authors have a reading, for example. They're, they're required to read their work at a bookstore, and they go to the bookstore and they have their reading. You like to stage things that happen at the reading that will be unconventional or, or create a scene. Is that true? Yeah, I was just I don't I didn't think I was such a good reader. I stuttered a lot, and I used to uh, drink a little bit before my readings, and mm -hmm. just I was really <laughs> nervous. And so I would be back in the bookstore stock room, you know, having uh, beers, and just to, and but then I was so nervous that I would just try to think of anything I could do to distract people from uh, me. Right. So right. we had uh, exotic dancers uh, once. That was my first reading in New York. I just hired some three exotic dancers to dance on tables behind me, uh, <laughs> which worked. People didn't hear a word I said. It was good. And now you also have asked people, to, you've put plants in the audience to heckle you, interrupt you and heckle you. Yeah, the same kind of thing. I would just have friends <laughs> that would, would get up and, and ask questions in the middle of the reading or whatever, three and four or five part questions, you know, always. <laughs> Uh, uh, you know, starting with part three or whatever, <laughs> right, like right. and uh, and mostly about their personal issues and problems right. with their anything to annoy the other people at the yeah, meeting. Yeah, exactly. We wanted to upset people. Very good. That's kind of what we do here. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> now, I, I didn't know that you were responsible for this, but a number of years ago, and and you probably some of you are familiar with this. There was this rumor that went around that the kid from Eight, Eight is Enough, Adam Rich, had died. Yeah. And uh, we have a picture of him right there. And this rumor went around that he had died, and, and it turned out to be false. Now I find out, researching for this interview, that you were the one that started the rumor. Um, well, I, he was complicit. It was, um, uh, we went in, we did it together. We had... You did it, with, so you, got, you contacted Adam Rich yeah. and said, I want to pretend that you died. Yeah, yeah, he wasn't our first choice. Um, <laughs> we, we, what a body blow to Adam Rich. Yeah. We well, want to pretend he, you died. Uh, you're not our first choice. Well, he had already, it, well, this is a magazine that we used to do called Might, and he had already written a column right. about how to move, and it was all about moving right. your stuff. Right, so you so, knew uh, him a little bit. And, uh, I don't know why. So then when we wanted to have somebody die, we, in sort of parody of the eulogies that would come out of these uh, celebrity sicknesses or death, um, we started with Crispin Glover, mm -hmm. and he was going to do it, and he liked to do it, but then he couldn't fit the, the dying into his schedule. Right, right. So we, then we moved on to uh, Adam Rich, and he said yes. So we went in on it together, but it, it sort of went horribly awry. Well, what went wrong? Well, he didn't, it was a little magazine in San Francisco, and he just thought it would be a lark and something funny to do, but he didn't think anybody would ever see it. Mm -hmm. uh, so he didn't warn his family. And, oh, um, my God. Or his friends. Oh, my stuff, God. You know, yeah, it, um, it got around in a matter of hours. Yes. And then, um, you know, people were calling him ex-girlfriends, and and Dick Van Patten calling and stuff, and very upset. <laughs> Dick Van Patten called? He did, he yeah. was upset. Um, yeah, yeah. But I, we, he, hadn't, he didn't think anybody would see it. He, right. we, we hadn't thought that far ahead ourselves. Right, right. Well, it's a whole new genre, who knew? Yeah. Uh, now, talk about another unconventional thing. You, 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 this is uh, a great thing to do, and uh, my wife actually uh, teaches writing, and, and, and this, you have a writing lab for kids in Brooklyn that you, that you opened recently to get kids interested in writing, and I'm, I was told that in order to make the kids happier or as an incentive to come uh, to the writing lab, you have a really fun storefront there that you've set up uh, yeah. that, that, that they pass through before they go to the writing workshop. Is yeah, that true? Yeah, we started one in San Francisco, and there we sell pirate supplies. So <laughs> it's just anything for the working buccaneer. Right, right. And, uh, <laughs> and then in Brooklyn, we wanna, it, it looks like a hardware store, but it sells uh, crime fighting supplies. So that's a different thing. So anything you need... Uh, you know, uh, superhero supplies. So you get your capes and your grappling hooks and you fill your <laughs> utility belts and that kind of thing. It has a full capery. A capery? Now yes. what happens in the capery? Well, you get your cape uh, tailored. You have your cape uh, tested and tailored and if you want How wanted, do you test a cape? Well, you, we have a, like a three-step steel graded step and you get up on the steps and, it's, and you strike your pose. You put on the cape and everything. And we make sure it's adjusted just so. And then the 
industrial fans turn on from uh, <laughs> above <laughs> and below and, and then, you know, the And you cape. get to do this and yeah. see if it's a good cape well, for you. you see it in action. You There's nothing more embarrassing than getting out there and having it bunch up or I something. would love to see this. <laughs> yeah. I would love to see this. Yeah. Um, and, and, uh... You also uh, motivate the kids uh, to write in an interesting way. You get the kids, and some of these are young kids, and yeah. to get them to write, you have a, a, a little technique. Yeah, well, there's a, we do a field trip where they come in and they write a story as a class. And so we have, a, in, 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 in San Francisco, up, upstairs, there's like a, a shed on the roof. And we cut a hole through the roof and put a ladder there. And we have a guy up there that we say is Mr. Blue. And Mr. Blue is upstairs in the shed, but nobody gets to see him. Mm -hmm. But Mr. Blue is the publisher, and he demands that they finish a story in the allotted time. So it's like you've got an hour to finish this story, but Mr. Blue, they don't get to see. He just yells down at them periodically. And he's like, S but they don't see him because he's 600 pounds and covered in boils and leeches. So we say, <laughs> Mr. Blue's up there and he demands the story. And so if you don't do it uh, uh, well and on time, he's going to... Uh, be very upset and so it, it is a good motivator so this actually. and there's a voice up there that occasionally yells down get yeah, going it's hurry one up. of our guys it's our managing editor he yells down and he's like you know what are you doing down there and if he hears them laughing he gets upset you know because it doesn't sound like work right and um, it puts a healthy fear into them i think <laughs> creative process there has to be consequences yeah you have a to poorly done story frighten children or they won't listen yeah, that's the whole point here it. everybody God, what's wrong with everyone? Um, you're also, I, I love this idea, you're, you've helped write a new dictionary, and this is a dictionary, let me make sure I explain this correctly, that uh, uh, exists in the future. Is that yeah. right? Yeah, but we have gotten a hold of some copies now, in the present, mm -hmm. and we, uh, it's, like a, it's called the Future Dictionary of America. It's raising money for progressive causes for this election, and it's sort of a, uh, what the dictionary of American language would look like 30 or 40 years hence when all the world's problems are solved in this administration is a distant memory. Mm -hmm. So it's um, Jonathan Safran Foer and uh, uh, there's about 180 writers that contributed, Kurt Vonnegut and Art Spiegelman and a bunch of other people and uh, so it's just full of its 1200 entries for, uh, that have a political bent I think. Well, people can check that out. McSweeney's Humor Collection, uh, Created in Darkness by Troubled Americans, which is chock full of really funny pieces, uh, is available now. The Future Dictionary of America uh, is also in stores right now. Uh, real thrilled to have you on the show. Thanks, Thanks so much Thanks. for being here. Dave Eggers will take a break. We'll be right back. Stick around.